Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews, and this is my review for The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 5. So, this week uh, we return to Navarro, we return to Grief Karga, the prologue tells us we are, um, of the previously on The Mandalorian. <laughs> we can always tell where we're going, uh, that's the good thing, uh, it reminds me of Lost, if you saw the person the previously on such and such a thing, you knew exactly what you were going to see. So, in this episode, we know we're going to get some the, some interaction with the pirates again, and thus, it is the case. The pirates attack Navarro, um, leading Grief Karga to um, request help from the New Republic to come and save them. Um, and the New Republic's like, nah, you're not one of our uh, member states, so... You're on your own, chap. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, sad, really. The New Republic, um, the the painting, the New Republic in this light that they're, you know, again, um, too preoccupied with other bits and pieces that they're they're blind to what's happening right in front of them. Um, the hubris of the New Republic is already in full swing, which it obviously leads to the inevitable rise of the First Order. And we're getting little flecks of that in this episode, or at least, you know, um, some form of continuation from the Empire leading into the First Order. But um, I digress slightly. We'll come back to that. Um, so, yeah, um, Grief Cargo messages um, an old pilot friend, someone again that we saw in previous seasons, a rebel pilot. I can't remember his name off the top of my head um, because he's <laughs> only a, a one bit character that's, you know, that we're supposed to know and care about. Um, so, yeah, this 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 pilot races to Coruscant to raise the alarm on Navarro. Um, before we do that, we see Zeb from Rebels, and he looks great, um, it's a CGI character, but he looks bloody great, wow, I was, I was surprised, we see Zeb from Rebels, um, I'm pretty sure he's the same voice actor, I'm not entirely sure, it's been a while since I've watched uh, Rebels, but, you know, cool, great, and the good thing is that they don't sort of linger too much on Zeb. He's kind of just there in the background alongside all these other these other rebel starfighter um, pilots. Um, and yeah, he's just there. He's just there and he says some kind of lovely quip. Um, and then we move on. Good. Good. That's how you do a proper cameo. You don't just throw them in and then have them absorb the entirety of the screen. Um you know, it, it felt somewhat organic. Um, obviously, we know the Ahsoka TV series, you know, well, we don't know. Um, we've got a, a sort of inkling of where that's going to go and, again, where that might factor into to this series. Um, so, yeah, this pilot rushes off. Uh, he says bye to Zeb. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Um, and he rushes off to Coruscant and the guy at Coruscant's like, nah, can't help you. So he rushes all the way back to um, the lovely planet where the Mandalorians are hiding in their caves. And uh, hilariously enough, the Mandalorians go, Ah, you found us. You've exposed us and put us in danger, so we may have to move. Oh, oh, oh never mind the giant monsters that have been attacking your base for, for fucking weeks, months, whatever. Oh, one, one single rebel pilot finds you because this droid put a tracking device in himself. Um... But these giant monsters that have been fucking your shit up for, for weeks and months. <laughs> you didn't have to move because of them. Oh, hilarious. Oh, the, the nonsensicalness of the Mandalorians is is, is perfect. Um, but yeah, so he comes and he's like, um, you need to go and help your friend Grief to, uh, to Din Djarin. And Bo-Katan's like, yeah, we're going to have to help him. We should help him because he's a friend. And they do a rousing speech, and all the other Mandalorians agree um, to go and assist and to go and find a new place to live. Essentially, Din says, look, he offered me some land. If we help him, you know, there's a good chance he might give this land to all of us as as a people. Uh, the dog's not very happy about that. I don't know if you heard him growling then. Um, yeah, so they race off to Navarro, and what follows is... Some fairly decent action. I'll give you that. You know, the Mandalorians in this episode are completely contrasting 
to the to the, the past episode. They don't run away. They don't go and hide in the caves. They engage in full scale combat. Um, Bo Katan drops, you know, two squads in, and we see them blasting the hell out of pirates. And of course, it's the it's the same pirate guy that we saw from um, a couple of episodes prior. Was it the premier episode? I can't remember. Um, and we see them. I think it was. We see them. Uh, the uh, Broccoli Man, I'm going to call him. We see Broccoli Man um, getting really angry. His hubris playing into into in, into everything. Obviously, when Mando comes in, the M1 Starfighter, um, he sends out all his ships to go and chase him, and there's obviously a double cross, and it's it, it works quite well. It's quite fun. Um, and obviously, there's always one that gets away, and the, the little pirate sidekick that we saw in uh, the, the premiere episode, I think it was, who gives Mando a bit of grief. Um, he skirts away. He flitters away. So obviously we're going to see him again, aren't we? Um, at some point. Um, and yeah, it all just it all just kicks off. There's a lot of gunfighting. We see we see big muscle uh, Mandalorian with the Gatling cannon. Um, very much Predator style blitzing, you know, <laughs> across the street. Um, no care for it causing any damage to buildings, you know. He just mows down all these pirates. It's 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 fun. I will give it. This episode is fun, um, but the dialogue. Oh, who's writing the dialogue at the minute? It's it's very naff. Dialogue's weak. It's naff. It's buzzwords and buzz phrases. It's there's no meat behind anything. There's nothing meaningful. It's all yay. We've saved the day. Oh, you Mandalorians are marvelous. You are my friends. Um, uh, now we must uh, do something. It, it, I can't even. I can't even describe it. It's tasteless dialogue. There's there's no flavor behind anything. I don't believe what people are saying, which is a very big issue for me. Yes, it's Star Wars. It's make believe. It's sci-fi. It's family friendly. But I have to believe Andor. Andor has crucified this series in terms of quality writing and dialogue. Um, purely because I believed everything that was happening in, in Andor. I believed what the characters were doing. I believed their struggle. I believed their conflict. Um, I believed that they were struggling internally to, you know, process what's going on around them. In this, I don't believe a single goddamn word that anybody's saying. And it's having a detrimental effect where I don't care about the story. Which really sucks, because I very much enjoyed the first season of Mandalorian, and the second season was a choppy cameo fest, uh, which I did still enjoy in part. Didn't like the ending, because um, I knew what would happen. <laughs> um, and this season's just, it's very up and down, it's very yo-yo, and I don't quite know what to make of it. Suffice to say, the Mandalorians win the day, and obviously Grief Karga grants them a piece of land. Um, and Bo-Katan is taken to one side by the armour and she says, you can unite all Mandalorians and we can restore Mandalore to its true to its true power. And she orders Bo-Katan to take her helmet off and says, you walk the lands between, you know, uh, both, both sides. So you can take your helmet off, you can put it on if you want. No issues. Um... And so we've set up a, a, a side quest for Bo-Katan to go and unite the Mandalorians. Where Din Djarin fits into this, don't know. Nobody knows. Um, again, he's still just a co-pilot in other people's stories. Um, likewise, Grogu. Oh, there's nothing in this episode for Grogu at all. There's no forward movement. There's no anything with Grogu yet again. So the two central characters this series is about, we we have no progress for them whatsoever yet again. Um, and then there's a, there's a, 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 a pre-credits scene. We see the rebel pilot from earlier on. He's in, in space somewhere, nobody knows. And he comes across a Lambda shuttle, uh, you know, the shuttle that uh, Vader uses um, and the Emperor uses in... Uh, Return of the Jedi, um, that very iconic looking ship, um, and they find it's been completely destroyed. Well, it's been it's been severely damaged, 
Um, and it turns out it's the shuttle that Moff Gideon was using. <gasps> Shock! He's escaped! We didn't see that coming, did we? Everything we saw in that episode with the two random Imperial characters on Coruscant. Ooh, Moff Gideon's coming back. Cool! He was a good character. I'd like to see more of him. I'd like to see how he factors into the resurgence of the Empire or building into the First Order. Um, I don't care about the First Order myself, personally, but... You know, it'd be interesting to see how they fold into it, see if they give decent credence to how bloody quickly they rose to power. Um, so, we see the shuttle. Um, it's been severely damaged, everyone's dead, apart from a missing Moff Gideon. There's no body for him. Um, nobody contemplates that he could be sucked out into space. He's just, he's gone. He's been rescued. Right, cool, no issues. And then, they discover piece of Mandalorian Beskar lodged into the framework of this shuttle and ooh, is the Empire blaming the Mandalorians for rescuing Moff Gideon not sure why you would jump to that conclusion anyway even if there is Beskar there because why would they rescue them but it sets up an interesting precedent is there something else going on behind all of this are the Mandalorians you know part of a greater plan who knows we'll have to wait and see obviously it's it's pointing in a direction that i, I don't think exists i think it is just the empire trying to set up dinjarin for a fall in order to obtain grogu <coughs> again the dog is not very happy about that um but there you go a fun episode a fun episode all action all the time um a lot going on ground ground battle um, you know, atmosphere battle, the, spa um, the broccoli man's uh, gets completely destroyed. He's absolutely useless. He waddles around in his in his command ship, shouting orders that do nothing. It's quite hilarious, really. Um, but the prosthetics are wonderful. You know, there's a lot of practical effects going on here with the characters on this pirate ship. It's it looks great. Um, but dialogue is is terrible. The writing is is laughable in places again. God damn you, Andor, for ruining that. Um, but it is what it is at this point. Um, there are clear flaws in this series, in this show for me at the moment, especially this season. But it was fun nonetheless. I can't deny that it was a fun episode to watch. Still, no idea what the point is of us even following Din Djarin or Grogu at this point. They're... they're they're, they're byproducts in other people's stories, and and rather than you know us seeing sporadic developments with them, you know, in terms of maybe monster of the week episodes or bounty of the week, or you know them being hunted, we we just seem to be floating around these these same star systems. Um, yeah, I I don't know, I don't I don't know what the end game is. I'm not sure what the point is at the pre at present. It just seems like an RPG game where um, you as the player are just hanging around the same areas trying to complete all these side quests um, in order to obtain the 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to leave this review there because I don't have much else to say other than that. A better episode than last week, which was frustratingly... <laughs> Riddled with the incompetence of the Mandalorians, they actually showcase their abilities, they perform better here. Um, but yeah, a 7 out of 10, I think I'll settle on for this one. It was okay, it was good fun. Um, and that's it, I'm going to leave the review there. Yeah, I may not do a review for next week or the week after because I'm not here. I'm completely away, um, but we'll see, we'll see if I do one anyway. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews such as this. I have been uh, creating recently a lot of not quite one paragraph reviews for some movies that have taken a bit of time to watch and put out reviews for. Um, so check them out as well. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. It's, it's going well at the moment. I'm enjoying myself. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.